Today we continue on with our NHL offseason plan series where we're looking at the 20th ranked team from the regular season, the Calgary Flames. Will we see significant change after another disappointing season? We'll discuss that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned, today we're carrying on with our NHL offseason plan series. We're the 20th best ranked team in the NHL, the Calgary Flames. In case you're new to the series, we are counting backwards from the 31st ranked team and working our way all the way up to number one. We're taking a look at the regular season stats, cap space, contracts that are coming due, as well as the uh, segment that we're calling the five burning questions. So the biggest items that this team needs to look at during the offseason and questions they need to answer to come back next season, hopefully better than they were the current season. So let's dive in now and take a look at the regular season stats and cap space for the Calgary Flames. So the Calgary Flames had a record of 26, 27, and 3 for 55 points, and they had a minus 5 goal differential. Another disappointing season. I know after the offseason they had last year, a lot of people picked the Flames to either win the North Division or at least be in the top couple of teams, make the playoffs, and have a shot to do some damage. They were coming off uh, you know, a couple of years now where they had some more regular season success couldn't follow it up in the playoffs but this year was different they didn't even have a shot at the playoffs and you have to think that there could be more changes coming which we'll dive into here uh, in a little bit now the special teams results were as follows the power play had a success rate of 18.3 percent 21st best so certainly that has a lot of room for improvement and the pk was probably about average at 80.2 for 15th best in the league they do have 13.7 million dollars in salary cap space Heading into the offseason, of course, we also saw a significant change throughout the season as the Calgary Flames fired head coach Jeff Ward and replaced him with the returning Daryl Sutter. Of course, Sutter not only returned on a short-term deal, but he actually signed a three-year contract. So he's going to be there for a few more years, and clearly this uh, ownership and management team believes Sutter is the guy to get things turned around so based on what we saw under Sutter for the remainder of the season I think it's you know fair to say that there's certain types of players on this team that he probably would like to see traded or changed out so we'll have to go through that here in the upcoming segment so they don't have a ton of cap space to work with but they certainly have some interesting deals that they could be working on so let's take a look now at the contract situation for the Flames heading into the offseason who do they have to look after either as RFAs or pending UFAs now, in the RFA category, they do have a few key players here, including forward Dylan Dubé, who certainly turned into a, a key forward for them. So, certainly he'll need to be looked after. They also have Glenn Godden. We have Dominique Simon, who I'm not completely sure he's going to be qualified as an RFA. Wouldn't be shocking if he wasn't. They also have defenseman Connor Mackey and uh, Yusuf Valamaki. Uh, there's no doubt that Valamaki will certainly get a contract for sure. We also have Oliver Shillington. Now, uh, it wouldn't be completely surprising if he is moved. I mean, it's hard to to say what his future holds he really didn't see a ton of playing time and was used as primarily an extra like a number seven eight defenseman all season so uh, i don't know what the future holds for him with calgary but i do think he's a serviceable nhl defenseman uh, if calgary doesn't want to give him a chance i think another team will so we'll see what happens with him now on the ufa side of things they do have a fair bit of names here but nothing too too significant they do have forwards Derek ryan josh levo and Brett Ritchie. Now, I think Brett Ritchie's probably out of that trio at least the most likely to get a contract. Hard to say about the other two. It's certainly debatable. I'm not sure that they will be brought back. Uh, they've got Buddy Robinson, who has been primarily a minor leaguer with limited NHL exposure in uh, games here in the last number of years. He's been around for a while. Uh, difficult to say how they feel about him. I, if he gets a contract, it definitely wouldn't be more than a two-way deal. Uh, they also have Joachim Nordstrom. Now, Nordstrom's already signed a contract to leave. I can't remember if it was the KHL or the SHL, but I know he's heading back over to Europe, and he's not going to be in the NHL. He's, I believe he signed a two- or three-year deal, so he's definitely not coming back. Uh, they have a few defensemen here, Michael Stone and Nikita Nesterov. Now, my, most people will probably think Stone might not be back, but, you know, he played a lot better under Daryl Sutter, he played a lot more under Daryl Sutter. Like, he was a guy that was a healthy scratch a significant period of time uh, under the old coaching regime here under Jeff Ward. But once Sutter come along, he seemed to really like Stone's game. And to be honest and to be fair, I saw a lot of the Flames games down the stretch, and I thought he was pretty decent myself. So it wouldn't be shocking if they signed him. Uh, probably nothing more than a one-year deal. He's been on one-year deals for a while, so uh, nothing he's not used to. And as far as Nesterov goes, again, 
They could re-sign him on another short-term contract, but if they do, it won't be anything longer term, that's for sure. We also have a goalie, Louis Domingue, who could be the backup goalie next year. That's debatable. And then we also have Zach Ronaldo, who also, you know, not really a regular either. And his future is debatable too. Now, obviously, let's take a look now at the key part of this video, which is the five burning questions facing this team in the offseason. What kind of changes will we see? What are their glaring needs that they need to address this offseason. Now, of course, as we talked about, the coaching situation has been settled. Regardless of what everybody thinks about it, Daryl Sutter's are going to be the coach of this team for the foreseeable future. Uh, so, obviously, that was a question mark throughout the whole year until the change was made, but that's something that we don't need to get into now. But, of course, one of the big questions and the top burning question for me facing the Flames is are we going to see a significant change within the core group of this team? If you look at the core group of forwards, that involves uh, Monaghan and Gaudreau and Kachuk and Lindholm, to a degree, Michael Backlund, I, I really, to me, Monahan and Gaudreau are the two we're looking at. Kachuk isn't going anywhere, and neither is Lindholm. Elias Lindholm was given their team MVP award. I thought he was really solid for them. Uh, Matthew Kachuk still, uh, you know, a younger player that they want to build around, so he wouldn't be moved for sure. Um, but Monahan and Gaudreau, the jury's out. I'm not really sure. I would be shocked if one of them at least wasn't traded. They've both been there a long time. They've had a lot of opportunities to win and get the job done. And even though they've had a lot of good regular seasons, this one not so much, but a lot of good ones in the past, they've uh, continued to fail to get the job done in the playoffs when they have been successful enough to get there. So uh, I'm not really sure which one is more likely. If you look at it, Gaudreau has been more of the point producer, but Monaghan's been a pretty solid goal-scoring center for the bulk of his career, and uh, neither one of them are overly old. Johnny Gaudreau is going to be going into the final year of his contract. Uh, there's a lot of people that are kind of on the fence on what he's going to do after that. Now, he said all the right things and made everybody think that at least that he and he loves Calgary, he wants to stay, would want to re-sign and or stay for the remainder or at least a big chunk of his career. But, um, you know, a, a players always say the right things and are smart that way. So it's not to say that he's not being truthful. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that he can't take that as the gospel here. Like, it doesn't mean that he wouldn't welcome a move if it was presented the right way, either via trade or when free agency does hit if he sticks around. But one of these two players I think are extremely likely to go. Um, I honestly wonder if Monaghan might draw a little bit more interest just because he's a center and a goal-scoring center. Not that uh, teams wouldn't love Goudreau as well, but I think that if they acquire Monaghan, they have you know a little bit more likelihood on term on the contract, more likelihood of uh, getting them to stick around, whereas you know a lot of teams, I think, are probably uncertain on, on Goudreau too. So I don't know, but it, it, I would be a little surprised if both were moved, but I think we're going to see the core of this team broken up and something's shaking up here. Something has to give after all these years of not seeing the success that the team looks like they should get on paper. So to me, something is going to happen this offseason. I'm just not sure which one, but they're the most likely candidates for a change of scenery. Now, another big move we can see from the Flames this year is exposing Captain Mark Giordano when it comes to Seattle expansion draft for a variety of reasons. For one, uh, he's a much older player. Uh, he's got one year left on his contract. Not to say that they wouldn't mind keeping him around. I don't think that's really a big issue, except that they have some other defensemen they'd probably rather not lose either. They just brought in Chris Tanev last year as a free agent. Of course, they have younger defenseman Rasmus Anderson and Noah Hannafin, and I think they'd be a lot more upset about losing any of those guys than they would Giordano. So where you can only protect three, unless you go with just eight skaters, which I'm not sure the Flames would do that either, then I think it's likely that Giordano could be exposed. Now, it doesn't mean he's going to be taken, but it is possible that a Seattle team could say, you know what, he's only got one year left on his contract. He's a good leader, been around the league a long time, still relatively productive for his age. We'll take a chance on him. I mean, we saw Vegas do that a little bit. Uh, I don't think they'd do that with too many players of that age or caliber, but it is remotely possible that Mark Giordano could find himself on the move, and I wouldn't be surprised if Seattle actually takes him if he is out there, and it only makes sense based on the rest of their roster makeup here. I mean, if they if they went eight skaters, then they'd probably be at risk to lose a guy like Michael Backlund. Now, of course, a lot of this, too, is going to be pending other trades. Like, if they end up trading one or two of those guys in the core, like we were just talking about, and this team looks a little bit different, maybe they go with eight skaters instead. I don't know. Like, that's what you're going to see a lot of teams here in the next three, four, five weeks leading into this expansion draft, uh, making trades to kind of, you know, uh, change up their roster composition to better protect themselves too. So we'll see. But I think there's a real good chance Giordano is available when we get there.
Question number three for me is, uh, do you extend and try to sign forward Andrew Mangiapane long-term? Now, he's coming off another solid year for the Flames. Went and joined Team Canada. Got there a little bit late, obviously, because the Flames were late wrapping up their season against Vancouver. But joined Team Canada to World Championships. Once he got into the, uh, the tournament games, he was on fire and led the goals and led the team in goal scoring and ended up becoming tournament MVP, helping Canada win a gold medal. Uh, played a lot on their top line with Connor Brown and Adam Henrique uh, along the way here. So he had a fantastic tournament, got himself a little bit more uh, recognition on the international stage, but he's quietly been putting together a nice, solid career with the Flames. And even though he's entering the last year of his contract, I think he's a player that Calgary should try to extend and lock up longer term. He's young and fast and has a lot of good skills here that can help this team well into the future. Future, I would get him locked up before his value goes up too much higher um, so that obviously you can save yourself a little bit of money if you're Calgary. So to me, that should be a fairly big priority for the Flames this offseason as well. Now, question number four for me is who is going to be backing up star goaltender Jacob Markstrom? Now, of course, he came in on a free agent contract, signed a big ticket. He's going to be the starter for the foreseeable future, but he can't play every single game. Now, of course, could they bring back Louis Domingue, who's an unrestricted free agent or a pending unrestricted free agent? It's possible, um, but he barely played this past year. Uh, barely saw any action at all. Of course, they had David Riddick as well. Uh, he was moved at the deadline to the Maple Leafs, and he's a free agent. I doubt he returns, um, and I don't think that the Flames are really in a situation where they have another goaltender already in the organization that could come up and be the backup. I mean, they have Tyler Parsons, who's 23 years old, but uh, last year he mostly played in the uh, East Coast League. Uh, he's not a guy that's developed as quickly as they were hoping. He came out a junior with a lot of potential, uh, and many thought by now he'd be further along in that development. Um, but I'm not really convinced at this point that he's going to be an initial goalie. They do have Dustin Wolf, who looks to have a lot more potential, but he's still really young, and I don't think he's really ready for that. To throw him into that would probably be a little bit unfair. I think he could use some more seasoning and get some time in the American Hockey League. So I think there's a real good chance the Flames likely dip into free agency if possible or, or make a small trade to pick up some sort of experienced backup goalie who they can sign and have on the books here for a fairly cheap price. Now going back to the point about Giordano likely being exposed, if that indeed does happen, what is this blue line going to look like? There are certainly a lot of question marks with Stone and Nesterov being UFAs. If Giordano happens to go as well, that really only leaves the other three that we talked about with a guy like Oliver Shillington uh, kind of being questionable as well. There's really not a lot in the mix there like in the in the pipeline for younger defensemen coming up who are ready to take a shot I mean they do have Valimaki who can get a bigger role but still that's still not going to give you quite enough defensemen so I do think it's quite possible whether it be through trade or through free agency that they add some more depth on defense uh, I'm not necessarily convinced it's going to be a huge name but it could be I mean if you look around the league and what's available out there and rumored to be for trade it wouldn't be a complete shocker if the Flames did go for a guy like Maybe a Matt Dumba in Minnesota, for example. That's just an example. I don't have any links to say that they're, you know, for sure interested in him. But, like, you know, Minnesota could use a center if they do move Monaghan. A Monaghan for Dumba deal, it to me, is a real possibility. Um, but they do need help on the blue line. And I wouldn't rule it out to just be some depth. I think they could go... To a bigger name, but only if Giordano moves on. If they still have that contract, it's going to make things complicated. And I don't really think they'd be in a predicament to do that. But if the captain does move on via expansion or trade this offseason, I can see another guy like Dumba or a comparable being the target to try to bring back in any kind of trade that sees them moves out one of their other core pieces and maybe even add some extra depth through free agency here as well. So those are all my thoughts on the Flames offseason, what I think they should do. Of course, I want to know what you think as well down in the comments. So let me know what you expect from the Calgary Flames this offseason, and we'll discuss further down in the comments. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news from all 32 NHL teams. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.